So then we have eight laps to try and figure out this second brake pedal. <laughs> That's how you launch, by the way. Hey guys, Jimmy here, and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about a little bit of F1 ingenuity that I didn't actually know about until a couple of years ago, despite it happening all the way back in the late 90s. And that is the famed McLaren third pedal. Now, this is a part where the F1 boomers come into the chat and say, well, back in my day, Jimmy, they all had frame pedals. Yes, they did. Well done. But back in the 90s, the transition to the more modern flappy paddle gears on the back of the wheel started, and that third pedal actually disappeared pretty much entirely apart from McLaren. Now, whilst McLaren ran the flappy paddle gearbox, same as everybody else, they still had that third pedal in place. That's because that third pedal was a second brake pedal. So the way it works is actually fairly simple. Throttle and brake do the same as they would in any other of the F1 cars of the same season, but the second brake pedal would brake only one of the rear tyres and that would be changed by the team, I believe, race by race. So for example, at Interlagos, where two of the tightest corners are actually right-handers, you would use the second brake to hook the car in to the right-hander and just give you that little bit more rotation than you would by using the standard brakes. Eventually, this was found out. Photographer Darren Heath very sneakily snuck a camera into the cockpit of one of the McLarens when they failed. I think it was at the Nürburgring GP and then snapped the third pedal, which got everybody asking questions. And eventually that pedal was then outboard. But now I get a chance to be a massive sim racing nerd and relive that because the guys over at Racer Studios have put the McLaren 97 McLaren in AMS2 along with this third brake pedal. So I'm going to go see if I can use use it. <laughs> but just before I go and embarrass myself, you might recognize my t-shirt today. That's because this video is sponsored by... Yes, Hot Shot Racing, and if you're a 90s baby like I am, this is going to look all too familiar. For those wondering what the game's all about, well, see for yourself, it's pretty much every old school racing game blended into one with modern PC and console performance. That includes 60 frames a second in single player and a host of new game modes, including my favourite, Cops and Robbers, a fantastic chance to bully your friends. Well, ex-friends, I guess. I'm genuinely super excited for this game to come out, and if you are too, you can check out more in the link in the description below. So then we have eight laps to try and figure out this second brake pedal. <laughs> That's how you launch, by the way. Big set of 11s down behind us, and luckily for us, we're on the Goodyear tyre, which can take a little bit of punishment, but still not recommended. So through the centre S for the first time, people crunching in front. Nice little bit of crunch through there. And away we go then. For eight laps into Lagos, going to try my luck around the outside. No one out of grip and talent there from a track. Going to dip into the slipstream though, try and get both of them coming down towards T4. Really bumpy on the way down there, you really feel that in the VR. Nice, nothing up there. This, I guess, technically is T4. And now we go up to T5. Really fun, fast corner in this car. The car isn't quite as planted as modern machine users, you can really use it. And now, first time we're going to attempt to use that other brake pedal. So, tiny touch on the way in. Only a tiny touch. Don't really need much more than that. And same again up here. Oh, hello. Sideways. And then, oh, touch the car in. There you go. Very nice. And we're through. So it's a very subtle use of the brake pedal through there. Very subtle use indeed. The thing is, it's uh, one, it's um, very weird for me to be using a third pedal in this sort of car. It doesn't quite feel right. And, um, and two, I am using my clutch pedal, which ramps up right at the very end as a sort of clutch does in real life. So... Um, I'm having to really be careful how much I hit the, the brake. Otherwise, if I lock that brake um, on the right rear, then I'm going to just go around. I'm going to just spin. It's like having a wheel just locked randomly. So I've got to be really careful with it. Otherwise, it's going to cause me more harm than good. But you're seeing the effect of it. Just a little bit of rotation. Just a tiny bit of rotation. I might just reset my VR quick because of how uh, janky the VR is around the circuit for some reason. Oh, I gave it a praise a minute ago. There you go, nice and cool. But it's really great to see this sort of stuff implemented in a simulator. It's a very uh, racer thing to do. I, I sort of thought with um, with AMS3 that they maybe come away a little bit from the super duper hardcore simulation stuff that they sort of made their name on back in the day. But having this pedal back in it, oh my god, makes you think otherwise. And I just, it's really awesome to be able to even try this. I'm going to give it a go into here. There you go. You see the car just for a second starts veering to the right 
I haven't quite got the hang of it yet, though. I haven't quite got the hang of it. Not to the point where I'd be improving time, I think, but you're seeing just how it's used and why the, uh, the right rear brake disc would be glowing over the course of a race because it gets more use than the others do. I think mean, a, a, a separate brake pad or a separate uh, brake caliper or something on the right rear uh, hub to keep things working properly. So, oh god, my... Jimmy, come on. You're seeing this car, anyway, isn't the easiest thing to drive. It slides around a lot. You have no traction control, no ABS, none of that stuff. But you do have that very weird brake pad that you have to try and get used to whilst racing everyone around you, missing apexes left, right and centre because it's fashionable, apparently, Jimmy. of course, modulating your foot in the right place in that pedal. It's, it's madness. Big understeer on turn in. Tiny bit. And there you go. You see, maybe I need to be using that brake pad a bit more on the way in as well, but... There you go. Taking over there. Got it just about right that time. Just about right. It's so soft with it, though. It has to be so soft. Absolute madness. Now, I'm sorry to say my VR headset isn't quite enjoying this as much as I thought it would. Uh, but sorry the VR is moving around a little bit. I'll try and do my best in editing to get rid of any big stutters. But it is somewhat distracting, I'm not going to lie. So the car itself, by the way, um, much the same as the other historic cars they've been bringing into um, AMS2. Very decent quality, sounds fantastic, I and mean, you might have noticed that if you're a massive McLaren fan, aka my boy Stephen J. Bailey. But it just has that signature McLaren Re, uh, Mercedes Re, I should say, from the late 90s. It sounds just like the old McLaren V10, uh, or sorry, Mercedes V10, which was, which is an amazing little detail because they do sort of blend together those V10s after a while. Can I use it through here? I don't know if I want to use it through the fast right. I might try that on the next lap. Oh, there you go. You're seeing there just how much rotation it gave me. I went a bit too far that time. But I'm not sure when I should be kind of going from each brake to the other because I'm essentially applying two brakes at the same time, of course, smoothly having to transitioning from one to the other. And my brain isn't quite managing it. The muscle memory isn't there yet either. So I'm starting to get back on to the guys in front after improving a bit through the mid sector, I think. Really short fifth and sixth gear just to make the most of the revs. Thank you very much. I'll take that. Oh, God, a bit of contact. Better be careful there. Sorry, mate. Just like karting. Got to hit them all. Oh, still locking up that front left tyre. I'm barely putting any pressure in. It makes you remember just how much slower these older cars were. Not These things are still, of course, weapons. Driving one of these things in real life would be a hell of an experience, but... Just madness to even get the experience to, to try it. Rocketing up the hill now, this thing weighs 600 kilograms, it's so light compared to modern cars. And you really feel that agility in the, uh, the slower corners here, especially with this brake pedal. Easy now. Come on, soft on the throttle through here. You want to just nail it on exit because it sounds so cool, but it's definitely a rough ride this. Not many laps left, I think, so I'm going to have to try and start winding up a little bit. Start driving a bit better, I think. There you go, there's the run, there's the sip stream. Brake just past the 100 meter board. Take the inside line, you almost wish you had the brake on the other side for a T1 there. It's a hard braking zone, so you can't really get away with it. I don't think the, 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 the third pedal works so much in the harder braking zones, you know. It has to be, I think, a soft one. Um, Otherwise, you're going to just lock up one wheel. Now, as I mentioned before, where you could, you could, ah, oh, Jimmy, make the corner, you pleb. Um, but as, as you've seen, no, I almost went too far before, and the car started to come round on me. Imagine doing that into a heavy braking zone, and you sort of see why it can't really be a possibility. Ah, oh, see, I'm just not carrying enough speed in. I'm not confident that I can stop the car or rotate the car properly on that other pedal. You almost want to overshoot the corner a little bit. And then... Oh, hello. <laughs> I went so much speed in the corner, I ran into the guy in front. Sorry, lad. 
I mean, ultimately, this is one of those little nerd things that you'll probably play with once or twice and then never touch ever again. Um, but this is the attention to detail that I always liked about Razer Studios. And I'm really glad that it's made its way into, into AMS2 here. I'm starting to call this game Project Cars 3 because this is what Project Cars 3 I think probably could have been. But I think even that is doing it as a service uh, because this is such a cool little addition. Again, in my opinion, the car drives fairly well. Not quite up to the, um, the standard maybe of um, RF2 or something like that, but it's really damn decent and more than enough to give you a lot of fun and a lot of challenge, as you're seeing, I'm barely hitting any of the bloody corners. Still understeering big time by that understeer slide that kind of prevalent in most of the AMS2 cars. It's tempted just to... Right, okay, here we go. Maybe? I don't know, like, like it's very hard to gauge if you get it right or not, because it feels so foreign. Well, like, when you break into a corner, you usually think, yeah, I nailed that. That was better, though, you saw that. Just brought it into the apex right at the last second there. But it, it just feels so odd to to be doing that. I still haven't got the hang of it. Definitely not. I wonder, how, I wonder for the drivers, that's been such a big deal, because um, I can't really show you the Darren Heath photo, because it's not mine to show, but um, if you go look it up online... You can see how small this pedal was in the cockpit compared to the actual brake pedal. So it must be such a challenge to kind of get used to using that, or even remembering to use it. But that's why F1 drivers are some of the best in the world, you know? Right, here we go. Let's try and actually hit this second apex, shall we? I don't believe we have many laps left. I've got all my HUD off because I like to have the HUD off in VR. It just gives you that extra level of immersion. So I have to sort of guess when the checker is, or maybe I'll see it wave this. I didn't see it wave last time. Do I, I don't want to use the brake there, that's the thing. See, I used it there, but I used it too early. I, I found myself on that sausage curb on the inside, but again, you're seeing how it's used. Ah, it's so tricky to, to to gauge it through there. Mainly because the car is kind of hard to slow down anyway. You see, I'm locking the brakes quite a lot in some of the corners, and once I'm doing that, the last thing I want to do is lock another one. <laughs> That's when the big spooky happens. All right, give me that draft, boy. Give me that suck. Checker not out yet. Look up the inside! Thank you very much! Oh, I think it is out. I think that was the last lap. God damn it! I wish I was a checking flag or something, because I'm like into that last minute attack and I'm not getting it. Great, so please add the checkered flag guy waving the flag so I know when the race is over. Thank you very much. But that was the McLaren um, third pedal. Sorry that the VR is, was doing this a lot. That was me trying to correct whatever the, the game was trying to give me. It was very odd, so apologies for that. But that third pedal, very, very hard to master. I'm going to just, now we're at the end of the race, I'm going to just do this. I'm going to use only the third pedal on the way in. See what happens there? It's sort of just... It does slow the car down, not very much. So I'm going to try it again, and just up here, just while I've got a bit of space. It's not quite the same as a normal brake pedal. It's not quite got that stopping force. So it's kind of hard to, in your mind, to go, right, I now have to transfer between one brake and the other. Because I assume that's how it's done. Anyway, I assume it is. But, um, yeah, guys, this uh, car is out in uh, AMS2. Go give it a go if you want to try out the awesome McLaren third pedal. I had a lot of fun. It's uh, always cool to learn something different about either F1 or how things work. What we need now, AMS, is the old Brabham Fam car, if you're going to do cool cars like that. Yes, please. Thank you very much. But uh, guys, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to tap that like button. Subscribe as well if you want to see more stuff like this. I've got to say, as always, a massive thank you to my patrons and sponsors for making it possible for me to do crazy stuff like this as a career. Take care. Have an awesome day. I'll see you all next time.